Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Peace Garage. Today on the 65 Mustang, we're going to change the front drum brakes. Now before we get started on this job, we're going to check to make sure I have the right drums and shoes. Let's get started. Before you get started and take the wheel off, make sure you have the right parts. I have a brand new drum, I have all the new hardware, make sure it's all there, and I have brand new brake shoes. And it's important to know which brake shoe goes where because if you look at these, if I put them right next to each other, see how one, one shoe is longer than the other? Okay? The two brake shoes are different. And I have done brake jobs on cars where uh, people have put both the short shoes on one side, both the long shoes on the other side, and I wonder why I was pulling one direction. Uh, the shorter shoe goes in front. This is called the primary shoe. So the short one goes in the front. The second shoe goes in the back. That's the secondary shoe. So that's the way they go. And then you check to make sure you have the right diameter. Make sure it fits inside the drum. That way you know the right shoes, the drum, the hardware. Everything is ready before you take the wheel off. That way you don't have to take it apart. Find out you have the wrong parts and put it all back together. Now always remember to work safely. Jack up the car. Have a jack stand underneath. I like to jack it up underneath the frame to have the suspension nice and loose. And you give your uh, ball joints and tire lines a quick check. You should go from top to bottom. If you can feel any play top to bottom, you have a ball joint problem. If you go left to right this way, and you have any play in there, we have a um, problem with tie rods or ball, uh, tie rod ends, something like that. Now, I have some play here. You can hear that? And it seems to be all the way around. But I looked inside, and, and the ball joints are tight. So I'm going to look at the axle when I get this off, and we'll take a look, see if why, why this might be loose. Now, as I look at the wheel bearing here, looks like there's some play in the wheel bearing. It could be either that there's not enough preload on it, or that the wheel bearings are shot. So we'll take that off after I get the tire off, and we'll see what the bear problem is with the bearing. I have my uh, cover off of here, and if I'm lucky, this drum will slip right off, which is good. Now, when you do this, don't breathe in any of that dust. It's not good. So here's something interesting. Someone must have had trouble getting this off and they beat the uh, back of the drum or hit it hard to try and get it off and cracked it so that's one problem okay and uh, yeah so this hub is loose so I'll start to take this off we'll take a look at yeah see that's loose that shouldn't be loose that should be more than finger tight there should be a preload on there Take this off real quick and take a look at the bearing to see if the bearing is uh, is cooked. Take a look real quick. Not too bad. That might look like it's all right. This one also feels all right in the back. So I'm going to put this back on here. And I'll put this back together with a little preload. See if we can get that to go away. Yeah, it was just a little loose. That went away. A little preload on the bearing. Not too tight. You don't want it too tight. Should be able to spin it. But what I'll do anyway is take that out and repack the bearing. So I took the bearing, cleaned it up, and it looks pretty good. There are no flat spots on the bearing. It looks relatively new. It doesn't look like it's worn out. And you can tell by just by actually just holding on to the center of the bearing and then working on the cage on the outside. And if it it doesn't come loose or doesn't feel wobbly at all, it's in good shape. But this is something that drives me crazy, what people do. Someone took the dust cap that was on there, and they thought it would be a good idea to seal it, and they put, looks like RTV or silicone or something, all the way around the outside of the dust cap. It drives me crazy when people do crap like this. I hate it. Don't do this. If it doesn't fit, get the right size or make it work. I mean, someone beat the living hell out of this thing. I'll get a new one anyway. But I'm just going to clean it up so I can put this together. Now that I have my bearing clean, I'm going to repack it. 
uh, there is a tool you can use to do that or you can do it the old school way just put some grease on your hand and I'm going to take this edge here and it's kind of like just going to nip, nip it off there the grease just like that and as you go like that it's going to fill the bearing Oops. get a better look at that just going like that and I'm pushing grease into the race of the bearing until it starts to come out and once it comes out you know you have the bearing packed properly yeah it's a little messy but it works well and you don't have to worry about a special tool and it lubricates your hands <laughs> and then we have a properly properly packed bearing. Now you got to set the preload on the bearing. Just push that in. Put on the washer and nut. And this is pretty common for all tapered bearings. And this is the way I do it. Of course there's probably a million ways to do it. And everybody will tell you what you're doing right or wrong. But, but I like to do it until I feel it tight, like that. I can barely spin the... Okay, like that. Then I'm going to back it up one half turn. And I'm going to do it again, just so it spins freely. It should be like 15, 20 inch pounds on there if you're going to use a torque wrench. And that's plenty of preload. And now that bearing is, is, is uh, got a nice preload on it, it spins, and there's no play. I put the tire back on just so I can check it. Nice and solid. Okay, no more movement. Now I can take the wheel off and uh, the drum off and change the brakes like I came here to do. Okay, I took the hub back off just to make it easy for you to see as I take this apart. Here's another example of why people shouldn't work on things if they don't know what they're doing. This is hanging off. This is part of the self-adjuster. This is supposed to go in back of the springs. And since it's hanging here in front, this was not adjusting. This is the left front. Since this wasn't adjusting and the other side was, the right side was tighter, so the car was pulling to the right. And because the wheel bearings were loose, you're getting shaking. So you get that shaking, pulsating, and pulling to the right. All because of this. And this is worn pretty significantly. I have the star screwed all the way in here, so this is that minimum adjustment. And the last thing to do is adjust it. You can see this is really, really loose. So I'm going to disengage the star and start to expand 
the drum or the brakes and the screw is going to spread out like this and I'll do that until it just about makes contact still pretty loose Takes a little bit of patience to get it just right. It's getting there. It's just about catching, so I'll go back by one turn, by one turn. Perfect. Just, just right. So changing your own drum brakes is not that difficult. Don't be afraid. The one piece of advice I can give you is when you take the drum off, take a picture of the whole assembly so you can reference it. It makes it a lot easier when you go to put it back together to make sure you have the right springs in the right spot and in the right orientation. Now it's late October of 2020. We're still in this pandemic. And for the historical record, if anybody watches this video in the future, yes, we are still in, uh, in the middle of this whole thing. Everybody's uh, quarantined masks. We're waiting for a vaccine, and it still is pretty crazy around the world. It doesn't look like it's getting any better anytime soon. I hope you're all staying healthy and taking care of yourself. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.